Let's continue exploring the universe within art and the art within farming. I'm your host, Omledu, and in this video we're going to be looking at how to fix your iron farm if it breaks and how to improve the rates on some of the various designs. I've also included examples of all of the different designs of iron farm that I typically see people building. That way, no matter which design you're using, hopefully I will be able to help you fix your iron farm if it breaks or to just improve the rates. This is also a continuation of my very own iron farm tutorial, in which I went over all of the mechanics behind iron farms, so if you're looking for a stable design that's really easy to build, you can go check that out. Now any well-designed iron farm should be getting about 400 iron per hour, unless you unfortunately built this clickbait iron farm right here. This is just going all over the YouTube, but it is super duper clickbaity. I'm just going to call this the clickbait farm because it has absolutely terrible rates and breaks all the time. So we'll also be going over how to fix this horrible design. But let me start off by saying that iron golems need 75% of villagers to work on the previous day. And most villagers do not work if it rains. So if you notice that your iron farm is not spawning golems, it could just be that it rained the previous day. So always just wait a day or two to make sure that your iron farm is truly broken. But if you've spent multiple days around your iron farm and it is still not spawning golems and it's also not spawning cats, then that means it's either the beds or that there are cats and golems in the area. So check the entire area within 64 blocks of your iron farm for beds, cats, and golems. Make sure to kill any cats and golems and destroy any beds in the entire area around your iron farm within 64 blocks. And once you've done that, if it still isn't spawning any golems or cats, you need to go ahead and break and replace all of your beds. And when replacing your beds, make sure to start with the centermost beds. You want the pillow of the first beds that you place to be as close to the center of the farm as you can possibly get them. That is because the village leader will claim one of these beds and you want his bed to be as centralized as possible to make sure that golems spawn on the platform. And then as for all of the other beds, it doesn't matter where you put them. Just make sure that there are green particles on top of every bed that you place, especially the very first beds that you place that are centralized. Now if your beds are far away from your villagers, or if they're higher than two blocks above their head, the villagers aren't going to want to connect to the beds. They will need some encouragement. Now generally, as long as one villager claims a bed, the rest of them will follow suit. So you just kind of need to build a platform or transport the villagers to be close enough to claim the bed. Now this doesn't seem to be an exact science, but I will say that villagers always connect to beds if there's only three blocks of air from the floor to the bed. So you just need to get the villagers on top of a platform that is three blocks away from the beds and they should connect to them. Or you can wait until nighttime and place a bed onto your platform. That way they jump up onto the platform to sleep, then you can break that bed and hopefully they will start connecting to the other beds. And this is why I highly, highly recommend placing your beds only two blocks above the villagers and no more. This makes sure that it's really easy for the villagers to connect to the beds without you having to move them around. But once you've relinked all of your villagers back to their beds, making sure to start off with the most centralized beds for your village leader, it should be fixed. Now you also do not want any tamed cats within 64 blocks of your iron farm. If you have too many tamed cats nearby, it will turn off golem spawning altogether and totally break your iron farm. But also, if you notice that cats or golems are spawning around your iron farm, that either means that your spawning platform is not big enough, your spawning platform should always be at least 17 by 17, or it means that your village leader has switched to a bed that is not in the center of the farm. The village leader is the one who will claim a bed first when you place beds near villagers. Golems will spawn up to eight blocks away from that bed, or up to six blocks above and below that bed, but only on the highest available block. So also, if you have an older design of Iron Farm that uses two spawning platforms, these no longer work because now golems only spawn on the highest available spawning block. And this is why the clickbait Iron Farm has terrible rates and also breaks all the time. Since the spawning platform is so tiny, it has horrible rates and is probably spawning cats and golems underground. Now if your iron farm has turned into a cat farm and is not spawning any golems but it is spawning cats, that means it's your villagers' workstations. Again, to spawn a golem, 75% of your villagers have to have worked on the previous day. 
If that requirement has not been met because the villager's workstations are messed up, then it will only spawn cats. Now it's also really important to note that sometimes villagers who have been traded with will still switch their occupation the first time that you break their workstation. So if you have broken their workstations already, it is totally safe for you to just go ahead and break all of the workstations and replace them. But if you have never broken the workstations before, what I would recommend is just releasing the villagers from their cells and letting them go to the workstation that they are trying to work at and then re-trap them into that cell. This will also show you what other villagers have the incorrect workstation or the incorrect cell. And so while they're trying to work, all you have to do is nudge them into their cell and then trap them in. And there are a few ways that you can help prevent them from switching workstations or from switching beds, which I will talk about here in a minute. But the most important thing is to have traded with them at least one time. If you don't trade with them at least once, they will just constantly switch workstations whenever they feel like it. And this is especially important on this design that uses two teeny tiny cells. You know, not only is it hard to get the villagers in there, but you need to have made sure that you traded with them first. And we will talk more about how to fix that design if it breaks here in just a little bit. But if you don't want to release the villagers and you're not worried about them switching occupations or resetting their trades, you can simply break all of the workstations that are broken and then place one down and see who wants that workstation. Then break it and give it to that villager. The same villager will claim the same workstation each time in the same order. So you just place down one, see who wants it, and then give it to that villager. And there are a couple of things that you can do to help prevent them from switching workstations or switching beds, one of which is trapping them in a minecart. Now, I don't like doing this because I don't like using minecarts, because minecarts are laggy because they count as entities. You know, but you can also flood the villagers' feet. You know, I have done this before, and it did seem to help. I think the reason that this works is that it messes with their pathfinding, so rather than constantly looking for a new bed or a new workstation, you know, they're more worried about not drowning. You know, but them bouncing up and down can add to lag, and it can also make it more difficult for them to work at their workstation. So I would recommend placing a block directly above their head, just so that they're not bouncing around all the time. But now, onto the fixes for this design that uses these teeny tiny cells with the villagers all trapped in a one by one. Basically, if their workstations get messed up, you're pretty much going to need to build them a bigger box, because trying to do one workstation at a time is just really difficult and is going to give you lots of trouble. So what I recommend is expanding their box. You know, be sure to use like leaves as the floor so that you don't spawn golems inside of their box or cats, you know, and then just kind of build a box around these one by one cells. And then we're going to replace the workstations. Now, I, I really do not like this design unless you're stacking iron farms. If you're stacking iron farms, you know, you kind of need to do it this way to some extent. You know, but if you're not stacking iron farms, it's a lot more effort to get the villagers into a one by one, and then you can't even trade with them. So it's like you're spending more effort for less value. You know, so I'm not a big fan of this design, but to fix it, you need to build a bigger box on both of these cells and then break every single workstation and then start placing the workstations one by one into the walls of the new bigger boxes that you built and make sure that a villager from that box accepts that workstation. If a villager from that box does not accept that workstation, then put the workstation on the other box. And you also need to make sure to trade with all of these villagers at least one time, or they're just gonna constantly shuffle their workstation. And the reason I didn't go ahead and break the other box like you need to is because there's one other way that you can fix this that I would actually recommend more than building a bigger box. But if you want to keep it the same design where you can't really trade with them, you know, after making bigger boxes and destroying every single workstation, again, just start placing workstations one by one and give them to the box that wants it. Once all of the workstations have been claimed and are on the correct box, it should start spawning golems again. But there's actually an easy way to convert this farm into a village trader. Village traders are not only easier to fix if they break, but also you can trade with them. You know, start off by removing your lava trap, remove your campfires, you know, regardless of what kind of kill chamber you're using, just turn it off momentarily. And then we need to build a house for the villagers to live in five blocks underneath the farm. That is five blocks of air between the bottom of the farm and the floor. 
and you'll want to place down a water bucket so that they don't take fall damage and then temporarily break out your collection system. And now all we have to do is if these cells are above the farm, you just let them out and they will drain into your new house for them. Now, if they're kind of over the edge a little bit, you may need to build like a little catching area and funnel them into the farm. You know, so build like a little water slide to catch the villagers and then funnel them into the farm to get drained into their new house. And again, you will want to trade with every villager. This will help prevent them from flip-flopping their workstations. You know, but if you funnel all 20 of them down into the same room, that won't really matter. You know, now if your beds are still linked, you shouldn't have any problems. But if your beds get unlinked, the reason I said build this five blocks underneath the farm is so that if you need to, you can replace the beds and they will link up without having to do any extra work. So to have everything link up nicely, the beds need to be one block above the villagers' heads. This means that the villagers can only have a two block tall house within a roof of either solid blocks or slabs, and then the beds on top of that. Now the beds themselves just need to be within six blocks underneath the spawning platform. You know, golems will spawn up to six blocks above the leader's bed. You know, but for villagers to easily link to the beds, the beds need to be within two blocks of the villager's head. And again, start off by placing the beds at the center most place so that the pillows of the beds are going to be surrounding the hopper that is your collection system. You always want the first bed that's claimed to be as centralized as possible. But you know, if, if it's still spawning cats before you place the bottom beds, then you don't need them. You know, they're still linked to the top beds and they should stay that way. You know, so as long as it's still spawning cats and stuff, you know, it is totally, totally fine. But you just need to replace your killing chamber, and then you just need to place their workstations, you know, so that they can actually work. You know, so if you're just building a box and you don't want to trap them into individual cells, you can just build the walls out of workstations, you know, and they will wander to their workstation whenever they need to. Or you could go ahead and start trapping them all into their individual cells if you want to. It is all totally up to you. If you want advice on trapping them into their cells, check out my iron farm tutorial where I go over advice on how to easily do that. But either way, now all you have to do is build some sort of entrance where they can't get out, but you can get in, and you'll be able to trade with them now instead of just having an iron farm. I always, always recommend having a village trader of some kind with your iron farm. You know, because building one without the other is just wasted effort. But also be sure to kill any cats or golems that escaped while you were, you know, moving the villagers around. You know, because again, you don't want any cats or golems in the area, because it will break your farm. And now all that's left is to rebuild your collection system, which is as easy as just poking a hole in the wall, adding a hopper or two, and then adding a chest. You know, and then you could always build an item sorter or a shulker loader or any sort of complex storage system farther underneath the floor. And again, if the beds get unlinked, just break the topmost beds and replace the beds on top of this little platform right here. The villagers should connect to the beds all nice and easy. Just again, be sure to start with the four centralized beds because you want one of those beds to be the village leader's bed. And now on to how to fix the clickbait iron farm. You know, I'm so sad whenever I see this farm getting tens of thousands of views on multiple different channels because it's just so clickbaity and horrible. I've had several friends hit me up and be like, help, my iron farm is broken, and it's because they built this horrible design. You know, if there's a cave nearby, it's going to spawn cats and golems in that cave, and you don't know where that cave is, and you don't even know that it spawned cats and golems there, and so you don't even know why it's broken. It just is. You know, and then even if it doesn't do this, even if there are no caves near the farm, the rates are horrible because the platform is so tiny, there's very few golems that are ever actually going to spawn here. So to fix this, we're just going to dig out by eight blocks in every direction from this farm. So eight blocks, including the current walls of the farm, and we're going to dig down so that we're one block above where the current water is, so that you end up with this giant hole. Now, this isn't really optimal. You know, ideally, you want your collection system to be 17 by 17 and totally flat. You know, but this is just an easy way to fix this design without having to break all your beds or move your villagers around. Also be sure to kill any cats and golems that escaped into caves and to fill in any holes so that you're left with a giant smooth square. Then we're going to place a single block into all four of the corners and then pick up your lava with a bucket. You know, if you didn't do this first, it will convert some of the water into stone. 
but that's totally fine. Just break out the stone and then leave everything else. Now we need to grab some water buckets and we need to place water along all four of the walls, except for the blocks touching the corners. That's very important. Don't place water next to these corner blocks or it will turn your entire platform into water source blocks and you don't want that. So we're gonna place water every other block or every block so that we have a water source block along every single side except for the blocks next to the corner. And we also need to place a water bucket on top of each corner, but I kind of forgot that for a minute. So we're not gonna do that just yet, you know, but just go ahead and place a water bucket on top of each corner. And so your new water should come up right to the edge of your old square because your old square should be eight blocks away from the wall. And now we just need to redo the collection system. I would also recommend placing some temporary blocks to block out the water so that the water doesn't push you around, but we're gonna place a sign above the sign that's in the hole, and then a sign coming off of that that's above your old square, then a sign on top of that one, and then we're gonna make a circle of signs coming off of that. So we're gonna place three signs on this side, then we're gonna place one sign in the middle right here, then we're gonna place three more signs on this side. And this is so that we can, you know, trap in the lava so that it's floating above that middle sign right there. So the very top section should have eight signs, then the layer under that should have two signs, then you'll have a single sign on the wall underneath that. And also make sure that none of the signs are blocking any of the top water. The only space without water is the hole. And then if you placed temporary blocks to block the water, break out those temporary blocks, and we also need to place the water on top of each corner that I almost forgot to do. But that's it. Now the farm is should be fixed. It should never break. All the villagers in the beds and the collection system will remain the same. You know, you may need to dig a new access point to get to them. But other than that, it should now just work without ever breaking. And the rates will be better, but they won't be ideal. And that is because since they go down one block into your old kill chamber, the cats especially are going to fight it. They're going to jump up that block constantly and not end up going in the hole. You know, ideally, you want your spawning platform to be flat. You know, the ideal spawning platform is a 17 by 17 platform that is totally flat so that they never try to fight going into the kill chamber. But I just wanted to give you an easy way that you can fix that design so that it stops breaking. It'll still have pretty good rates. It just won't be ideal. Now, you could always just redo the entire farm. You know, you already have villagers in the hole, so all you really have to do is break all the beds, make sure that the leader's bed is centralized, and then fix the spawning platform so that it's 17 by 17 and totally flat, with a hole directly in the center. But also, speaking of rates, if your iron farm has this sort of kill chamber, you can actually improve the rates ever so slightly by changing the kill chamber. This is how I used to build my iron farms, and I would notice that sometimes golems or sometimes cats would, would just stand on the edge and try not to fall into the hole. You know, this didn't happen this time, so maybe it's, it's not as prevalent. You know, but if you're getting less than 400 iron per hour, then I recommend just switching out this kill chamber. So if your spawn platform is 18 by 18, we just need to make it 17 by 17. So build a wall on two of the sides, then place the blocks in the corner, and then place two blocks next to the corner block just to get rid of the water. So we're gonna place a block up there to get rid of that water, then place a block in the corner, then two blocks next to that to get rid of the water, and then again, block up there, block in the corner, two blocks next to that temporarily to get rid of the water. And now we just need to, you know, build this wall up to match the other one. So go up by one more block, put leaves on top of that, you know, and now we're left with a 17 by 17 platform with a single block in all four corners. And so again, we need to place water on the two sides that we took the water out of, you know, without placing water next to the corner block. We don't want water source blocks on either side of the corner block. And then place a water bucket on top of each corner and our new spawning platform will basically be done. Oh, and if you don't want your lava turning into obsidian, you might want to, you know, pick it up with a bucket first. You know, but then we're going to fill in this centermost point and we should have a one block that doesn't have any water on it. And that's where our new collection system is going to be with our kill chamber above it. And as always, I would recommend placing temporary blocks to block the water so that it doesn't push you into the hole. You know, but we do need to get rid of the campfires and stuff that is in the hole, and then go up by a hopper or two so that the campfire is higher so the cats have less way to fall. But we also need to make sure to surround the campfire in blocks so that the cats can't escape. 
and so you'll be left with a one by one hole with a hopper that is two or three blocks down the hole. And we're going to place a campfire on top of that hopper, of course. You know, but first we need to place our signs to hold our lava up there, and that smoke is kind of intrusive. So we're going to place a sign in the hole, but I also recommend placing temporary blocks so that the water doesn't push you around. But then we're going to go up by two more signs. So place one on top of the one in the hole, and then place another one on top of that. You will have to crouch to place signs next to each other, or on top of each other. But then on that topmost sign, we're going to place four signs going off in each orthogonal direction. So the front, the back, the left, and the right. And then on those four signs surrounding the middle one, we're going to go up by one more sign. So that we're left with an air block in the middle that we can place lava on top of the middle sign, like so. Now if you're having trouble aiming at the top of the signs, you can always pillar up. This will give you a bigger hitbox to aim at, so that it's easier to place signs on top of each other. And then all that's left is to break out our temporary blocks and replace our campfire so that we kill the cats that fall in the hole, and then we're done. So really when it comes to rates, you have when are your golems dying? You want them dying on the platform and not fighting to fall in a hole. You know, two, how big is your platform? How many spawn points are there? You want it at least to be 17 by 17, but you also don't want any lips that they can get stuck on. And then three is how many villagers do you have? You know, 20 villagers can only spawn two golems, where 30 villagers will occasionally spawn a third golem, but it happens so rarely that there's only a 50 iron per hour difference between 20 and 30 villagers. But then if your farm breaks, remember that it's either your beds or your workstations. And I almost forgot to mention, but keep lightning away from your villagers. You know, if lightning strikes near your villagers, it will turn them into witches. You know, so if you're building these farms above ground, be sure to have some lightning rods around in the area to prevent lightning from hitting your villagers. I don't know exactly how lightning rods work. I have done hours and hours of research trying to figure it out, and I just can't figure out the specific details of lightning rods. You know, so just put some lightning rods at least four blocks away from your walls, keep them away from the leaves of your farm, you know, or you could always build a platform out of glass way up at build limit. It is totally up to you. Just keep lightning away from your villagers. But that's all we got for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, share, and subscribe, and leave a comment. Even if you don't know what to say, just tell me hi. I would love to hear from you. And as always, if you have any questions or requests, simply let me know down in the comments and I will do my best to help you out. And in the video description is a link to my Discord. You can join that Minecraft community to share pictures of your builds, find players to play with, find worlds to play in, or really anything Minecraft related that you would like to do. So I hope to see you there, and I hope to see you down in the comments as well. You know, and a big shout out to all of my subscribers and all of my supporters. It is because of all of you that I can continue making these videos. You know, I just make these to help people out, so I really hope they help you out. You mean the world to me, and I really appreciate all of your support. And if you're new to the channel or not subscribed, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Hopefully there is something there that you will enjoy. But that's all we got for this one, so until next time, I've been your host, Omledu, hopefully teaching you a farming trick or two. And reminding you, as always, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye!